Kira team, welcome to the last wholesome half hour of the year. My name's Sarah, this is Mackenzie. I'm Mackenzie. I'm going to disappear from your screens for a while. Yeah, um, we're, we're, you know, high-fiving Michael Bublé as we like go into the cave and he comes out. But, um, yeah. I feel like I made that joke last year. Yeah, I feel like you did. Damn. But to finish you off, we have a long episode. Yes. Uh, yeah. Interesting choice of words. Uh, this episode was going to be about as long as you guys asked for it to be. Um, so yeah, we, we put a question up and we kind of, I just kind of asked, what's been on your mind all year that you haven't asked yet? And I said, the future of school, career, uni, seriously and somewhat less seriously, climate change and significantly less seriously. The, the Illuminati. Illuminati. Um, shall we get straight into it? Because yes. there's like heaps of questions. Yeah. So wide yeah. range of stuff, but a little bit future focused and also just oddball questions. Yeah, and we might like sit on one topic for a while because you guys did ask a lot of um, like questions in the same realm. So I think it makes more sense for us to try and like tackle like the whole topic of like what will school look like in the future at yeah. once rather than like touching yeah. and going. We'll, so we'll, we'll tease it. There. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll incorporate it all. Cool. Um, what, should, uh, what should I do when I leave school that's PE related and it will make me successful? Brackets, not uni. I think you should become a Les Mills instructor. That's my advice. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I think, I personally have something against studying something for like if, like if you're only going to do it, if it's going to give you like excessive wealth when you're older, like I personally yeah, sure. don't back that too much unless it's for like an outside reason that has something for you motivating there i don't know it sounds like you're interested in pe i would personally just like pursue that as much as possible and see where it takes you definitely look into stuff like personal training yeah. and um because nine times realm yeah, yeah nine times out of ten you don't even know what's out there until you go in there um yeah i think there's that's some really cool um there's a lot, of, I'm not sure if you know, so there's a lot of private gyms in Wellington and there's a lot of yeah. personal trainers that work out of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a lot of room in that industry if that's something you want oh, to Oh, 100%. Into. Yeah. People are going to gonna keep getting fat. So I mean. <laughs> Society is on the way. Consumerism. On the way, on the way up on the uh, scale. Yeah. 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 Well. yeah. Um, yikes. Uh, is Otago the best duty in New Zealand? Uh, None no. of them are. Yeah. There is no objective, good, objectively good or bad. I think the only university that tries to think it's better than the others is mm. Auckland. So each of them have their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. It depends on what you're wanting to study. I imagine you're asking Dunners in regards to like med. Um, the biggest difference. Or partying. I don't know. I feel like that's too <laughs> Yeah. Too so <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've either got a thing for being trampled like Mufasa or um, sorry that was a really niche weird joke from a lot of different regions um, yeah I don't, I don't know Otago and Auckland do med slightly differently to each other um, mostly in the U, UMAP, UMAP UCAT test um, and how that's weighted but apart from that they're relatively similar like yeah. you're going to get you're going to come out with the same degree yeah um, and anything else very comparable yeah. 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 Um, why do you have? Why do you guys have merch? I don't know. I don't we know. Want, we we want. Okay. We wanted it for ourselves. Like <laughs> low key, it was really so selfish. It was, and it's just like <laughs> it's not a clothing line, so we get merch. If you're, if you're gonna get ten t-shirts, you might as well get like fifty. I think that was the that was the reasoning there. If you want some caps, you should get them. I'm not sure if the merch is even up on the website. I anymore. honestly I don't like even know. Like, are you funded by the Illuminati? No. Is Jordan the Illuminati? Maybe. How, how scholarships work? Depends on the scholarship, depends on what you're applying for. Um, it depends on, usually each scholarship will have its own set of requirements of like the things that you need. Um, so it depends on what you're aiming for. If you're going for one of like the generic big scholarships like the Otago 30 grand or the Auckland 50 grand or the Vic 20 grand, um, then like I would just recommend looking into each specific scholarship. Um, each university has the details and like Do you requirements. Move that way, just like a tight, just like a, yeah. Oh, that's a bit too much. No, you wanted space, so I gave you okay, space. Fine. I'll sit over here. Then. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so I would recommend just looking on whichever like university's website that you're thinking of going to and just seeing what's out there because there's honestly a stupid amount of scholarships oh, available. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're if you're a Catholic dude who's played cricket for the last fifteen years, you're in luck. You've got a million scholarships available to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how does one join Stay Time? How do you get your job, uh, SJS? 
I know, I know you transitioned from one role into another. Yeah, we usually do our hiring on SJS. Yeah. Uh, for um, anyway, that the, doesn't the know The catch with SJS search. or Student Job Search yeah. is that, oh, A, you have to be enrolled or you need to have an SJS account. Mm. That's catch number one. Catch number two is they don't tell you who you're applying for until you yeah. get selected. Yeah, SJS is low key a bit yeah. weird, but like it's cool. Um, I know we, we toyed around with this, like we thought in the future it might be like funny slash cool if we had study time interns. Mm. We reckon that would be crack up. Um, don't know what we'd make them do. Um, maybe just make Sarah yeah. and tea. If you're, if, you're interested, if you're interested in becoming a tutor, there's a, uh, um, the other side of our business, Inspiration Education, there's like a, somewhere on the website, there's like a careers thing and you can like email your CV and stuff. True. Um, if you were super passionate about working here, it would be worth giving that a shot. But, yeah, oh, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who's the mad lad behind the memes on this page? <laughs> I don't know if that's sarcastic. Uh, unsure. Unsure. It's a mix of us. Mackenzie's been doing most of that recently. <laughs> I hear you trying to hide. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, because it's, a mix it's of like, us. because it's it's one of those things like. You know, it, it's it's so funny and narcissistic of me, but like every time I post a meme and everyone's like, oh my God, it's so funny. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm funny. Like I'm so validated by it in the most stupid way. Um, alternatively, when it's not received well. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, it, it's it's um, it me. Uh, I haven't made a meme in a while, a, like a good one. Yeah, it was it was something that I was like to supposed to be shared around yeah. by everyone, but apparently I've just got the most like self-deprecating Making good humor. memes is a lot harder than I think people realize. I wouldn't know. I don't make good memes. Um, okay, first, first big question. Yeah, first big question. Thoughts on NCA as a whole? Do you want to go first? Do you, I want to go first? Um, I have conflict thoughts, but I can go first. I can summarize them. Okay, I'll, I'll go, go first. first um, I'm just listen, looking at Will, listening to Hot Girl Bummer. <laughs> 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 Sorry for all audio that just caught that. Um, I screenshot and send it to him what he's listening to all the time, and he hates it. I love it so much. Um, I think, okay, um, first off, there's no such thing as a perfect system, um, and I think everyone needs to kind of understand and accept that to an extent. Um, there is absolutely no system in this world that works perfectly. Um, education is just another sector of the government and they are putting more money into education at the moment. Um, they are planning on doing a rehaul of NCA in the next one or two years. Um, we've seen some of the outlines of what those plans might be but they're probably subject to change before anything's like, like formally announced. Um, I don't know, I feel like at the moment it was just like kind of like an ideas sheet that they had. Um, it doesn't favour everyone, um, but that is the nature of any kind of blanket system that you have. Um, society as a whole right now does not serve everyone in society. Um, that doesn't mean that that person isn't good. It just means that the situation that they've been put in or the environment that they are forced to exist within um, doesn't suit them. And that is very normal. It's very perf uh, not perfect. It's, it's very normal. Um, a classroom environment serves maybe like 50 to 60 percent of students and the others are left to like you know just catch up or get left behind. Um, I think we like to roast NCEA but most students don't even understand the system that was before that um, which was objectively worse. <laughs> yeah. um, that only had final exams at the end of the year so like everyone's like external suck and like I agree with you wholeheartedly my dude um, but just be glad that your entire year of study is not hinged on that. Yeah. The, the biggest the biggest plus for NCA is that you have the mix of internal and external yep. assessments. Yep. And that's somewhat unique um, compared to other systems. Yeah. Um, and that was something globally. that served me personally better. Um, the NCA style exams didn't suit me. University exams suit me quite well. I do a lot better in them because um, they're more straightforward. <laughs> but the, so, co the contents not more straightforward but the exam structure yeah the, the exam structure and the exam questioning is the university lecturers They're have better things to do with their time yeah. than like try and write really convoluted questions um my thoughts on it is that it's not perfect um it doesn't serve everyone um but at the same time i don't like the idea that we can compare it to this like uh, this idea of a perfect system that serves everyone because that just is 
impossible. Yeah. Um, that's not something that's possible, so we shouldn't treat it like it's an option. We should aim to improve, but not make something perfect because you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my thoughts on NCA. The internal external mix, mix is excellent compared to other systems. Yeah. Um, I know people always rock on about Cambridge and all that stuff, but Cambridge is like fully exam based. Yeah. Like that's it. Same with IB, um, and IB is even worse because you set your exams after two years of yeah. study. Um, I think a mixed assessment model is the best. That's the model you have at uni. Most uni courses use a mix of external or internal and like exam based assessment. So this is like a test and an essay and a report yeah. um, and like maybe an end of year exam. Um, and okay, my, my biggest thing with NCA is I feel like the actual system and the way it's designed is better than the way it's executed. Yes. So the, yeah. the, the, Everything is better in theory because there are going to be practical obstacles. Yeah. So yeah. The, the other big good thing with NCA is that there's so many standards and you can theoretically pick the mix of standards that's best for you. That but is one of the up, things that they're planning on changing though. Yeah. One of the things that ends up happening is your school picks the mix and yeah. that's that. And yeah, I think, yeah. sorry to interrupt you again, but like in recent years, I think the thing for me as a tutor as well has been increasingly frustrating is schools giving up on things when yeah. NCEA, like an MCAT is a really perfect example of it, um, where students learn for it, but because they had a really awful year, I think it was 2017, um, some schools in the Wellington region decided that they weren't going to be doing the MCAT anymore, that they just vetoed themselves out of it. And that sounds like a good idea because they did it for the well-being of their students, um, and I completely understand that. However, what I have noticed as a result of that is what they teach in placement of it is so watered down and so superficial that it's not actually giving you the knowledge that you need. So the trade-off there is, oh, your, your feelings are spared, but also your knowledge is also not extended the way that it would be otherwise. I feel like even though students may dislike it on face value, you're probably better off with NCAA having one or two more assessments per subject yep. than your ideal amount would be. That yep. gives you an opportunity to... It essentially gives you the best opportunity to yeah. do the do as well as you want yeah. to, whether that be just pass or whether that be getting a merit or yeah. instance endorsement. Like a, a good example of it is um, I can have a year 13 student for level three statistics um, and obviously at level one and two it's all chunked together as maths, however there are probability standards within each of those subjects. However, if the school decides to veto all the probability standards at level one and two, which they quite commonly do, um, they're, they're, oh Jesus Christ. Oh, God, a figure of a man. <laughs> um, what kind of happens as a result of that is I will get a student at year 13 who, um, by, no, by no fault of their own, um, they know absolutely nothing that they should have three years of education on already. Um, so having to teach someone three years of content when that was something that the school decided they were going to omit from their student's curriculum, that is incredibly frustrating. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. Um, well, let me just skip that. Uh, if we don't stop climate change, school will no longer exist. Big one. Um, if that happens. Okay. Actually, these are really interesting thought that I don't know. So, my mum's a preschool teacher. I was just talking to her about this. I forget that, like, so if you don't go to school, like, let's say you just don't go to school, mm. you can't even read or write. Yeah. I like, like, Obviously, like, it makes, when you say it like that, it's, like, fairly obvious. Mm. But, it, like, as someone who has been able to read and write for their entire memorable life, that's not something you think about. Yep. And if you can't read, like, in present society, it's, like, it would be, it's extremely hard. On top of that as well, um, you do find that those who are lacking those basic, um, that basic knowledge, um, again, I'm not here to shade schools, but I'm definitely shading schools, is um, Steiner schools. Yeah. They serve a very select group of the population brilliantly. Steiner schools are really, really good for those who thrive in that environment, but anyone who's put in that environment that does not thrive in it, um, you are not only going to do worse, but you are going to be severely disadvantaged for at least the next few years. Um, I'm speaking from like experience and like I've had family members go to Steiner schools and they haven't known how to read until they were like 13 years old. Yeah. Um, and that is 
not setting up a kid well to participate in society in any way, shape, or form, regardless of the temperature. Yeah. And if you can't, like, if you can't read and write, it becomes impossible to learn. It essentially, yeah. be- not impossible. It, it becomes extremely challenging to the point it's almost impossible to yeah. achieve Catching any sort of higher level of knowledge. So hard. Um, I think. I think because there was another question that sort of touches on a very similar thing to this of like, what's the point? if climate change is going to come here and kill us all. Um, and my argument to that is, if you have that kind of defeatist attitude, you've already lost. Yeah. Um, if you, because I, I had a friend who was like this as well, like she didn't care because she was like, eh, we're going to die anyway from climate change. And I was like, first off, that's really, really lazy and um, defeatist. Within our lifetime, defeatist. quite unlikely as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing that frustrates me is people who give up on things without even trying. Um, I think the people who say what's the point of what's the point of school if climate change is going to kill us all or like what's the purpose of like anything if climate change is going to kill us all it's like well if you're not educating yourself if you're not even equipping yourself to try and fight things um, then you've not even given yourself a chance in the first place Um, the options here are you don't do anything and you contribute to the problem or you do what you can within your means, and then you can say you're doing your best. And to me, that is much better than saying I never tried at all. Yeah. Uh, so if we don't stop climate change, school will no longer exist. Not a big one. Big loss. <laughs> um, you can put. You can pick the next one. What's your best life advice you've learned today? Oh, okay. Um, This is maybe not my best life advice. I don't think anybody else told me this, but something I realised as I got older. Um, Adults are just big, dumb children. Um, I think I've said that on this before. Uh, Maybe, yes. Um, Like, I I wholeheartedly believe that my ability to... not, Not, like, my general knowledge or content or my understanding of the world. Like, it's definitely better as it is now. However, when I was in high school, I had the capabilities to understand any situation to the same extent that I do now. Um, I just have more information to kind of draw upon. By that, you kind of realise that adults are like you, just with a little bit more experience. But that experience does not mean that they have a more valid opinion than you, or that it is more correct. Because nine times out of ten, isn't that? Um, I, think, I think one of the biggest things that I learned growing up was that adults can and quite frequently are wrong and we are taught from a very young age to do as told jump how high um and our opinions aren't really taken into account but i think what i really would have liked to have known when i was younger is to hear from someone saying your opinions and your thoughts about things are just as valid as anybody else's and deserve to be expressed or to be held by you. Um, I think I was very nervous for a long time not to put my opinions out there because I was like, oh, well, somebody else probably knows more about this anyway. No, they don't. And without a discussion, you can never learn things anyway. Um, so, yeah, life advice, adults are big, dumb children, including <sighs> me. I don't know if I'm an adult, but, you know, I guess, we're all just fallible yeah. humans, I guess. I guess mine is that things don't matter as much as you think they do. Mm. And that's not something you should mm. use to like get demotivated about life. You've got a mad mouthful of grind. Oh yeah, you should. That's really, okay. Yeah, anyway. yeah, like um, dude, I know. So like, I don't know, if you, and, and you have a lot of time ahead of you in your life, and I'll explain what that means. I don't, so when I was like in high school and stuff, it, the pressures to make the right decision for the next year and stuff are very high in your mind. And they're pushed. It's really overblown, and I'll tell you, what, like, you could say, say you. I'm just gonna put my laptop on charge, but like, keep okay. going. Say you like muck up at high school, and you don't do as well as you did, and you don't get into like the course you want to do. You have so many more options, and even like, like, so, so I'll, I'll give an example of myself. Like next year, I, so I finish uni now. Next year, I have to choose what I want to do for work. I have options available to me, and like, oh, that can seem like a really daunting decision. It's not an easy decision to make, right? But you can. It's that one decision isn't going to make or break my life. I could go into a job that I don't like that much, work there for three years, what, at the end of it I'll be 24, 25. I still have 
over 40 working years of my life yep. left. Like, and even if you, and like, even if you got into a job thinking it was going to be sick, and then you ended up hating it, hey, you like, can leave. That is an option. So, so most of you guys at the moment are under age 18 or just age 18, right? Yeah. Think about it this way: you can have, you can be age 30, 12 years older. So. Imagine what, how old were you 12 years ago? You're like literally a child. Yeah. Imagine living that time all over again. You could stuff that all up. You could get to age 30 and do nothing that yeah. you were happy with in your life. Yeah. And you'd still have at least 35, 40 years of your life, more than yeah. half of your life, more than half of your working life, ignoring retirement and that kind of phase completely yeah. to find what you want to do. There's a lot of time. So like, if you if things don't work out this year and if things don't work out next year and if things don't work out the year after that it doesn't matter it hasn't been your day, and one decision week, one decision what, the, what you choose year, to study what you choose to work will like never determine your entire life yeah 100 percent um you should read this one oh. <laughs> animal um yeah i think i just just sort of bouncing off that Excuse me for a second. I think this is something that I'm still working on myself, but I think it's something that we're always encouraged to think is that we need we we have to complete things. We have to complete high school and then we have to complete uni and then we have to go and complete something else in another job. And I think we kind of just forget that like we exist to exist. Like, we don't exist to complete things or to get over this hurdle or to do this thing. We exist, well, it's kind of by our this parents' choice, thought, not our own. But like, no, but like, that's just it. Like, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Well, yeah, well, but, it's okay, a mentality yeah, yeah, yeah. to break is this thing like we are always in a rush and we are always in a hurry. And I think people need to remind themselves that like you have all this time. You don't have to have it figured out now. Um, you don't have to have it figured out in 12 years' time. Like, that's so fine. And I think that's where a lot of anxiety from people come from is they want this idea of, like, being at this point of their life where they're already financially stable yeah. and already know what they're doing and who they are and what it is and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, stop and enjoy the ride, my dude. Yeah. Stop and enjoy the ride. Yeah, like, yeah, do what you enjoy. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um... What are some important items to bring to uni that uni uni form that no one talks about? Okay, my biggest advice in terms of uni applications and particularly scholarship applications is like bring to your uni form. I think I think like the kind of qualities or like yeah. things is um, I don't know specifically what's like super unique and I don't know how everyone does it, but I have I do know a little bit about some of the scholarship selection process at least at Vic. Um, and quite frequently, like, they're going to read a million applications that say, I was the head girl, I did this, I did that, I did whatever. Um, and that's fine. Like, if you have that kind of stuff, put it down for sure. But I think you have to be thinking about the ways in which you will make, like, the best of the scholarship as well. Like, why you kind of feel like, you know, what would you do with it? Or how, like, how are you, like, deserving of this, I guess? Um, a touch of, like, humbleness, I think. Like, it's very easy to read through something that just sounds like someone blowing smoke. Mm. Um, and that's not always a bad thing, but I think it's important to remember that these are genuine people who are reading what you're writing, and they will definitely read it. Um, that's not great advice, I'm sorry, but... Um, I have no idea. <laughs> that, that's my thing. It's like, put, put down the generic achievements or whatever. Not generic in a bad way, just generic as in, like, multiple people would be able to put this down as well. Um, but think about the ways in which you are unique or, like, a, something else that you can bring to the table that, you know, yeah. says something about you, maybe. I don't know. Why did I take an external that has subjects? In, or why did I take a subject that has externals in December? I don't know. I'm I don't lucky. know why you chose Sorry. dance. Um, um, will I ever feel? Oh, we'll kind of do this. I oh, don't know. Okay, what do we do if I haven't done enough in high school to achieve our dream careers? You can always. There's always another route. Just because. Yeah. Say, say, say you. Want, I don't know. You want to go into engineering. You want to go into med. Whatever. Say you didn't. You can't get in now. There's always yeah. like another way. Um, explore. Um, 
Yeah, there's, there's always another way to get where you want. Yeah. And um, if you talk to uni or someone, they'll be able to help you a little bit with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the biggest thing in, in these kind of cases is accepting that like what has happened has happened. Yeah. If you can do something to rectify it, then by all means do. But otherwise, what you have to do is look forward and look forward at what you can do with the situation that you are now in. Yeah. It's the same, uh, you can't keep hoping to go back six months and work harder. It's just not something that you can do. And while you know that thought might cross your mind, it's so not worth ruminating over it. It's so not worth settling on that um, because it's not gonna serve you um, anything in any kind of healthy way. Yeah. Uh, will I ever feel like I have the skills and intelligence? Oh, will I ever feel like the skills and intelligence I have in high school will be enough for uni? Um, at uni, you'll quickly learn that there are many people smarter than you, and there are many people who are less smart than you. Yeah, and that's yeah. how life is. But <laughs> like, I, I think I think what you will begin to see, though, is the people that do vastly better than the others are the people who actually put in the effort and the work. It's not even about it's not about being generically smart. It's no. it's about no. the time, effort, you, and strategy. If you put do not put in the time and the effort to your courses, it will be hugely hugely reflected in your grades. It is not like NCEA where you can throw in a couple buzzwords that your teacher gave you and go like shortcut your way to excellence. Like if you get a good grade, it means you know what you're talking about. And if you get a bad grade, it means you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, continuing on, other courses you can get into, still get into in Feb, March? Uh, yes, so okay, put halls aside. Unis will essentially let you apply right until the day yeah. that courses They're start. Pretty chill. And even the you know that two week window, mm. a lot of unis will let you apply during that as well. So you can kind of apply right until courses start and a few days into them sometimes as well. Um, they're pretty chill. They want your money. Uh, uh, do, 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 what do you actually what do you actually do or what yeah. I'll rephrase this, what did you actually do at university? Oh, it has to be past tense now. Damn, we are all. Um so I did a double major of psychology and criminology. Um, I graduated the end of last year. Um, so I've just been working this year. So I'm technically not a student. Yeah, I, I just wrapped up. So I finished my last exam was um, just over a month ago today. Um, so I did a conjoined BA, Bachelor of Arts, BCom, Bachelor of Commerce. And uh, marketing was my commerce major and political science and... Media studies were my arts majors. Mm. Um, and yeah, just finished. Um, yeah. So you did a double major under uh, a Bachelor of so Arts. So I did a conjoint degree, a, a yeah. double major in the Bachelor of Arts, and yeah. one major in the yeah. Bachelor of Commerce. Because yeah. I, I remember there was a question where someone was asking the difference between a conjoint and a double major. Oh, so, so a conjoint might, is two degrees. Worth. A conjoint is two degrees. What they mean by two degrees is in like two different faculties, yeah. like arts a versus arts, commerce. A Bachelor of Commerce yeah. or like a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science. Yeah. Um, double degree is two majors. So under um, a Bachelor of Commerce, you could do marketing and accounting or yep. um, international business and finance. Mm. Because quite frequently in um, like psych is a weird one in, at Vic at least because it is like the only subject that you could do is either an arts or oh, a arts. science. Pardon? Economics. Oh, economics? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, there we go. I believe, I believe, definitely at some unis you can do it. Yeah. yeah. So it just depends on how the uni frames it to you. I personally chose, I was actually going to do psych under a Bachelor of Science with something more like biomed or something like that, but um, I liked crim, and crim is an art subject. So I could have done a conjoint science, like I could have done a B sci in psych and a BA in crim, but I was just lazy. You can also do one major outside of your main degree but well that's a discussion you could do you could do all sorts of degree combinations yeah. and um uni course advisors can help you yeah. kind of fail through that if you're if you're interested in doing some sort of multidisciplinary degree yeah um best uni for business or management um most of them auckland waikato vic christchurch dunedin all pretty comparable business skills are kind of all the same um is the is the yeah i'm sure if you want to yeah, if you want to distinguish it a little bit, you can, but business program. If you're studying uh, commerce or arts, it's hard to go wrong, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the, the are, like some are better than others, but the margins aren't huge. No. It's not like, it's not like medicine where you have to go to Auckland. Yeah, go yeah. It's, it doesn't have that kind of nature to it. Yeah. Um, you're really filtering through those questions, eh? Yeah, there's so many, though. I don't want to be here for the rest of my life. Um... um 
Double degrees versus conjoined degrees, pros and cons of each, um, just because we started talking about this a minute ago. Um, I don't really see the point in doing a double degree. So I'll, I'll explain the difference. So with a conjoined... What's, wait, what's the difference between a double degree and a conjoined? Okay, so with a conjoined degree... Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know this was a thing. Oh my God. Oh, we're getting, we're getting, okay, we're getting I'm learning too. Change. So with a... Okay, so one degree, is, it depends on the degree, but Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Commerce, they're both three-year degrees. They both require 360 points. Mm-hmm. You get so, about 15 to 20 points per paper you take. Yeah. Um, so 360 points, two degrees, that would be 640 points. Mm-hmm. So with a conjoined degree, you get to kind of cross-credit a number of those. Yep. So instead of that, having yeah, to yeah, do, yeah, yeah. oh, that's more than, it would be 720, sorry, 360 times to 720. Math. Um, if, so with a conjoined degree, you don't have to do 720, you only need to do 540, and that gets you your conjoined BA, BCom. Typically that takes about four years. Typically Three, that takes three about if you go hard years. on the mahi, but yeah. yeah. Um, with a double degree, so you get to cross-credit 180 points, right? 720 minus 180, 540. Um, with a double degree, you get to cross credit less. I don't know how much you get to cross credit, but you get to cross credit less. The catch with a conjoined degree is you have to maintain a decent grade average. To I think it's a B to... or B minus. So is a conjoint basically like a quick, quicker way of doing a double degree? Essentially, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, but you have to keep the grade average up to prove that you can keep up with that workload. Yeah. Okay. Um, double degree is just... Oh, it makes sense I think me. you do get some cross-crediting, but it's less than 180. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, if you want to do two degrees, you should definitely do a conjoined degree. Um, otherwise, you're kind of just wasting your time. Um, Fair. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, 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 I'm sorry, I'm doing some real... You're doing some time. real filtering right now. Um, oh, you can, you can go for it. Um, um, can we as students ever recommend or change NCEA? Um, work your way up, infiltrate the system from within. Is there a review up for consultation? I have no clue. Um, I'll investigate that while you answer something else. Do you want? No, no, no. I'll okay. just do it. Oh, right, right. Um, Okay, this one, I don't, I don't know if this might be a bit weird, but I, I, I saw this one and thought it was interesting, is um, people in relationships going to different universities. Um, there's a few different ways that people go about this. Um, and it depends on the dynamic. Uh, I'll, I'll speak a little bit from personal experience, but like I personally don't know why people would immediately break up before going to uni. Um, Oh, well, I do, but you know. Um, <laughs> what's that? What's that? <laughs> you know exactly what it means. Um, I don't know. I personally think that, like, if you people agreed to break up when they both went to uni, like, you've kind of already decided for yourself how serious that relationship was. Um, I know people who have been in relationships since high school who have gone to different universities and are still together, um, even after they've graduated. Um, so it's not impossible if that's something that you like want to do. Um, in saying that, it's definitely more annoying and people don't like doing it. So a lot of relationships that do try and go into first year don't last, um, typically when they, oh, especially when they are at different unis. Um, obviously can't speak for everyone though. Um, everyone is different. Everyone's dynamics are different. Um, and I don't think, like I could, I could go on all day about the generic things that happen, but I definitely cannot speak for anyone or the dynamics they have with um, any kind of person. I do definitely think though that we hang on to a lot of uh, high school when we, like at least at this point of time, um, because we're worried or you know scared about the people that we will meet um, and stuff, but I think if you've decided to break up with someone before going to university, you've kind of told yourself that you are allowing yourself to make new friendships and relationships with other people as well. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Um, it's just a different stage of your life. And if you want to be free in that stage of your life, then that's totally your decision. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, 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 I don't think it's wrong either way, but things can get messy. You hear, this, this is my, you want to hear my controversial theory? Go. I think everyone has to have a... Oh, I guess it has to be. Everyone has to have a relationship that doesn't work out. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, so, except for my mum. My mum and my dad have been together since when my mum was 13. Oh, uh, interesting. I know. They're an anomaly. Though. Generally, like 95% of people, 
like you have to have one relationship that just doesn't work out mm. um, mainly because when you're in your first relationship you don't know what you're doing and oh, when, once you move on from that you generally have a better idea yeah. of how it's, relationships okay. work and not uh, yeah no not I'm, always I'm, I'm okay i'm definitely bearing it down to its basic parts but essentially you are a character in a game and at the moment your love stats are like down here you get your first relationship and you learn a bit and you level up a bit and when you level up you get better at it that's my thing you're you're in a game you're gonna level up that skill tree a bit and nine times out of ten you're not gonna get like max out on the first person that you meet yeah um, no matter how much you, your your fifteen year old heart thinks you love the person that you're with right now, yeah. um, that was really grim. I'm so sorry. Again, I can't That's speak for how everyone. You sound like a boomer, even though we're absolutely not boomers. I'm not a boomer when I say that. Boomers stay together for the rest of their bloody lives. Yeah. Well, they have to. It's a five mile walk to the next flat. <laughs> sorry, more more terrible jokes. Anyway, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's normal. Um, I'm not saying don't make emotional connections with the people that you're with right now. I'm just saying allow yourself to make more as well and don't yeah. uh, linger yeah. too much on it's things. It's not that easy, but I don't know. Most things yeah, will work themselves out. Always time. way easier said than done. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please talk about climate change. Um, we did, I think we did all of it, but also we have a whole series of videos on climate change. If you haven't watched them, you should watch them. People are asking about our opinions on it. Um, okay, I'll give you some opinions. All right. Um, okay, so a few things. This is actually kind of... Con okay, I really don't like this trend of climate change becoming... Over, like, all the movements in climate change becoming overly consumer-centric. Yeah. So you have the plastic bag thing. You have the keep cup thing. Those yeah. are probably the two main things that comes to mind. Straws. And there's nothing... Oh, straws. There's nothing fundamental... There's nothing wrong with getting rid... I think, like, getting rid of plastic bags, holistically, probably a good thing. Mm. Um, reducing paper cup use, reducing waste, holistically, probably a good thing. But the issue is... Turning... Uh, turning climate change into a consumer product is an oxymoron yeah yeah so like the issue is you could get rid of all the paper cups in the world you could get rid of all the plastic bags you could get rid of all the straws and know the reason for doing it is not just co2 emissions but co2 emissions you won't even make a dent we're talking less than a fraction of yeah. a percent yeah um and the issue i have with them being the primary movements is i think it distracts politically mentally from people's mind i think it distracts from things we could be doing that would have a much larger effect. So mm. in New Zealand, the primary example, I think I've talked to them about this. Like downing the Borgiaways. Um, primary example in New Zealand is like moving agriculture and stuff into the emissions trading scheme. I think um, Green Party, I don't know. Oh, the you're talking politics. I'm them, talking about political overthrows. Never the mind. current government said that they can make their own scheme, which is kind of outrageous. Anyway, um, I feel like it distracts from stuff like that that could make a much larger difference. Um, also, here's so like yeah, essentially for to see significant change in climate change, we need to see changes at the business and industrial yeah. level. And for yeah. that to happen, you need yeah. government to. Yeah. It's essentially, in New Zealand, the thing you'd want to do is move agriculture into the actual emissions trading scheme and slowly increase the price of carbon um, over time. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's the kind, it's stuff like that that will actually reduce the amount of carbon emissions we're putting mm. off in this country, not mm. eliminating paper cups, plastic bags. I like con this, this is a lot more controversial. I think carbon is a much more pressing, like carbon emissions, mm. reducing carbon emissions, I think is a much more pressing issue mm. than reducing waste. Interesting. Now, I don't, I don't have the waste, you do to like also, back that up or whatever, so I really can't comment. But. By reducing waste, you also, like, by reducing waste and by reducing the amount of plastic bags and stuff you produce, you do also reduce carbon a little bit. Yep. But the thing there I is have enough is, petrol in one plastic bag to move a car 10 metres. Interesting. The thing I have, the issue I have is, okay, once carbon goes into the atmosphere, don't, you can't, bank your car with plastic bags, by the way. You can't, <laughs> sorry. You can't get a, that, like, yeah. that's going to be in the atmosphere for, I don't know what the exact number is, but over 100, what is it? About Many years. years. A long time. More than, at, at least more than one year. And it's going to, oh, a lot more. Than, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but what, I don't know, I feel like, obviously this is a long-term sustainable solution, but I feel like we'd be better off cutting carbon emissions in the next 10 years and just have, like, but having a few more lamps on us. I don't know, this is... <laughs> Do you want to hear... A less politically charged opinion, sure. or less politically educated opinion. I think I come from I come from more of, of on the end of someone who is at kind of the receiving end of all this. Um, first off, uh, 
We personally shouldn't feel as bad about climate change as we do or as we're made to feel. Um, and what I mean by this is like, should we feel bad about it and try to do stuff about it? 100%. Are we 100% to blame? No. And don't let anybody ever tell you that otherwise because we can like, we can reduce the amount of straws in the world until the cows come home. But if there are still major corporations that are dumping oil using um, uh, like not sustainable means and they're not even trying because they have the money to pay off the right people to do the things that they want to do. Um, we, we get the brunt of a guilt that we have not done. Um, in saying that, we should try and live more sustainably, more e eco-friendly and stuff like that. We should do our part, but we also should acknowledge that the people who really need to change are the big corporations. Um, and we're not and the, the, best, the best way to achieve, oh, okay, this is a kind of changing, but the best way to get businesses to change is through government. You're, not, it's, you're yep. unlikely to get them to change on their own. You have to yeah, change the legal because they don't framework want within. To change. They have to work their yep. business within. People don't want to change when the current environment serves them. So you have to change the environment so it doesn't serve them anymore. Um, I personally have very little sympathy for companies who actively ignore research, ignore um, anything to continue to actively hurt what so many people are trying very hard to fight for. In saying that, um, we should do our best. And what I mean by our best, it will differ from person to person. There is a lot of privilege attached to living a sustainable lifestyle, um, particularly socioeconomic status. Um, a lot of families and a lot of people don't have the money or the means or the education to go out there and make these uh, kind of informed decisions that we, in this power place of privilege, do see. And I think what people don't understand is that even at this level, you, you have to understand that you're in a place of privilege. Yeah. Um, and being able to make these decisions. In New Zealand. In New Zealand, yes. At school. At, at school. Yeah. Um, we should do our best and understand that others are not Free in the water. position to us to make these kind of decisions. Um, for those who can't make those decisions, it is not their fault and it is not something that they should be condemned for, which is something that New Zealand society is very quick to do once they decide they like something. Um, I've been really critical this episode. Oh, wow. Sorry, team. Um, I don't know. I, too long, don't read. We should do our best, but we shouldn't blame ourselves. Um, we should try and work on a bigger level because that's where the issue really is. Um, some more controversial political thoughts I have. I think new petrol vehicles, new, new, not mm. used, new petrol vehicles, I think should be taxed heavily. Interesting. Um, because, okay, so if you were to say, just get rid of your car and petrol car and buy an electric car, that's actually not an amazing thing to do because the amount of resources to make that new electric car and the battery in that electric car, great. But in terms of new cars rolling onto the market, mm. we shouldn't be producing as much petrol cars um, as we do. Uh, minor issue in New Zealand electric grid, if we like hit a massive influx of electric cars, probably wouldn't be able to cope. But over time, incentivizing people to buy less petrol vehicles and buy more mm. Electric vehicles are probably a good thing. Yep. Um, fake meat is, I also find very interesting. Um, just so, so people are aware of this, fake meat tends to target people who eat meat or eat like a fixed... Yep. Um, if you're already vegetarian, the fake meat market isn't trying to cater to you. No, because, um, they, they, because they've already got you. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a lot of potential in that market, especially yeah. once... Because as far as I can tell, with fake meat, taste, is, taste and texture is almost there in some products it's yep. really close yep. with time and more money it will get yep. even closer and there is a lot of money being put into it at the moment yeah. um, and it's better for you mm. and at the moment it's, bit, it's there's a price premium attached with it yep. but with time that will come down yeah 100% um, I think that in our lifetime like not in the next five years but maybe 20 years I think meat will still be around but I think it will become more of a luxury product That's 100% my last thing, last thing on this is yeah. because we get this every time we talk about this, every time we show any involvement with these kind, this kind of movement is um, we still to this day have a lot of people uh, like, I don't know if it's just people being idiots in the comments or what it is, but like, I'm um, not kidding, yeah. we, I'm will, you. we will quite frequently still have people be like, but it's not true, like who cares? And it's like, 
of Eugene. And What's the movie? What's the 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 not U.S. president dude? Two thousand dude. You keep talking. Um, and I think while it is easy to respond to those who do not believe or are still digging their feet in with anger or frustration or uh, a level of patronising, um, I personally think that a lot of people who like actively don't believe in climate change um, is down to two reasons. Um, either they are not educated enough or have not been given the accessibility to educate themselves ad- accurately and oh, well, okay. because there is so much controversy on both sides of the party about greenwashing things, but also, you know, just the other side doing what they want to make bank. You should the- watch Al Gore um, and Inconvenient Truth. That yep. was like the first, one of the first big climate change films. The other thing... It still stands out quite well. The other thing that... I do genuinely believe this, is that a lot of people are digging their toes in against this idea of climate change and things is because people are scared and they don't want to accept it. Um, I think a lot of people are responding out of fear because I think if people dig their toes in, if people deny it, then they don't have to acknowledge it. Um, and that doesn't mean that they don't want to do the work, but I think it's a lot of people working out of fear. Um, I. I would like to think that most people could be convinced of something as rational and something that has so much overwhelming scientific evidence to support. Um, So what I would believe is that somebody is responding out of fear rather than ignorance. But I don't know. That's up to whoever to decide. The inevitability of death. Um, Death is inevitable in life and that's life. And you can't live in fear. So just have fun while you're alive. Yeah. That's like... That's like know, legitimately my thought. On well, that. it's it's something that everyone thinks about. Come yeah. on, mortality is definitely something that occurs to people. However, you do kind of also come to this realization that the more time you spend lamenting on like how long your life is going to be, you're also spending that time not really doing something to actively enjoy what you have. Yeah. Uh, how do I get a part-time job? Um, look, get write a C, make a CV. We have an article for that. Someone mm-hmm. asked how to make a CV. We have an article for that. Just Google like make a CV study time. You'll find yep. it. Um, how do I get a part-time job? Look what's available. Make a CV. Just literally walk to all the shops in wherever you live. Yeah. And like walk in um, and ask if they're work available. And that's what yeah. you can do. Um, and keep just don't give up. Like it might take it might take six months. Just just keep trying. Yeah. Every every second weekend 100%. until you find something. Because you will find something eventually if you, you keep trying. Um, is uni as hard as everyone's hyping it up to be? Yes or no? I think it. De- <sighs> Like, because I, I remember seeing this question, it was somebody asking about whether, like, high school and uni are more difficult. And I think they are in different ways. Um, and what I mean by that is, it, high school, we're still figuring stuff out. So I think, oh, well, we're still figuring stuff out. Like, don't get me wrong. But I think at high school, we're especially still trying to figure yeah. stuff out because we've kind of just realized that there are so many, like, of the big bad out there. And then we're like, oh my God, there's all this big bad. And we're still reconciling with that a little bit. Um, a uni, I don't think, it, it's funny because I always thought to myself, you know, it's going to be really hard when I get to uni to have the motivation to study all the time and stuff, but you kind of just realise that you just end up doing it um, because you only spend like three to four hours in lectures a week, maybe a tutorial, apart from that it's up to you. Um, and so with that, that much time that you do have, you do inevitably just spend that going over stuff um, and I think... I think to the end, they're different in the ways that they are challenging. I think when we get to university, we sort of move out of the stage of realising how the world operates to figuring out how we're supposed to operate in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why does NZDF, New Zealand Defence Force, seem kind of low-key? I'm just going to presume you're talking about careers. Uh, I don't know. Um, they're doing a lot of advertising. Um, but yeah, NZ, if, if, if it's something that interests you, definitely worth looking into Defence Force and Police. Um, both excellent careers. Um, if, if that's something that interests you, I don't know, they're kind of underrated routes. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, a lot of, most people just don't think about them because, I don't know, being a lawyer is more glorious. Can I answer this one? Um, sure, I have no idea what Yeah, because I do know what it is. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a manga. Well, it's, it, it, they have an anime adaption, but the manga's better. Anyway. Um, I, you've lost me already. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. Um, whoever asked about the Monogatari series, although I doubt this person's even watching it or knows, um, about your question, uh, no, because that was the cultural thing at the time. Um, if anybody's wanting to know what this is, it's about child brides. 
<laughs> and uh, so I you have to, under- you have to understand the cultural now, connotations right? that come with that time and what was normal at that time. And you have to, like, if you're going to write a story in a certain period, you have to be true to that period. Um, and that was what it was at the time. Yeah. So, you know, chew on that as you will. Uh, Ren, just someone asked a question. Just if you're having issues with uni applications or StudyLink applications, just call your uni or call yeah. StudyLink. It's yeah. annoying to call them, but it's the fastest way to get it solved. Because if yeah. you don't call them, it will go on for weeks. If you call them, yeah. you can usually get it sorted. Yeah. Um, what are you guys' holiday plans? What's your holiday plans for Henry? I'm going home. I, I have a nephew. Where is home? Hawke's Bay. I am... Um, yeah, I have a I have a nephew to meet. Oof, very yeah. edgy. Yeah. How does that make you feel old? Like a little bit. I also have a Christmas to ruin, so that'll be fun as well. Oh, that'll be great. My my sister and I already have like awful plans for Christmas Day, so I hope my mum is excited <laughs> for that because we're definitely going to make a, a scene of ourselves. Um, what do you? What's my holiday plans? Yeah, uh, what's I'm your from hol- I'm from Wellington, so I'll be here for most of the time. I'm going to Queenstown for New Year's. Oh, true. Um, that'll be fun. Uh, Sick. Booked a car yesterday. That was great. That was much more expensive than I anticipated. Split it was four Queens, ways. Yeah. It was split four ways. And there's still almost a hundred dollars per person. How many days did you four days? So that's like a hundred bucks a day. Yes. Hot damn. Yeah. That is, yeah. Um, that's and it's thing. like a mediocre car as well. It's like <laughs> nothing. Oh, okay, we tried to get a this. cheaper we tried to get a cheaper car, they're like, oh this is fucked out. And he's like, I only have two cars. Like, I'm like, I'll take I'll take the other yeah. cheapest one. Yeah, yeah, fair. Um, fair. Um, do, 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 do. If your mum has a child with your granddad, would, would that, that child, child be, be your, your sibling, sibling or, or aunt or, or uncle? uncle? A fun thought experiment. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you know what it does mean? It means that you should maybe uh, like emancipate yourself, would be my recommendation. And just remove yourself from your family. Yeah, done. Yeah. There are definitely other questions that you've zoom zoomed over. Yeah, uh, if you want, if you want. Okay. We're, we're almost taking an hour. Okay, so. okay, all right, all right, okay. Um, if you want to hit an hour, we can hit an hour, but I think we should stop after an hour. Okay, fair. I have things to do today. Yeah, no, that's fair. I have a um, I like you. Glad you didn't notice that coming. No, I did. I pulled a face. You no, just couldn't see it. Um, are you guys ever going to expand your subjects? Yes, when we can. Um, what happens if you're halfway through your degree and you decide to, not to do it? Uh, do what you do enjoy instead. You just have to pay off your student loan. Yeah. <laughs> just want to know your go-to fast food chain uh, slash what's your order? Oh, this is a good question. This is a great question, actually. I want to dwell on this for a while. What? Go. No, no, you go first. I want to... Um, so for me, problem. it's actually very annoying uh, slash inconvenient because uh, in terms of fast food, I can't get like the generic stuff. I think Subway counts as fast food. Just I don't. I don't really partake of the meat. Uh, <laughs> so uh, for me, I the veggie burger at K Fry, which is very ironic, is actually real good. Interesting. It's, and yeah, I know it's a it's a weird juxtaposition. I'm I'm not comfortable with it. Suppose the Carl's Jr. one's quite good. I don't know if anyone has ever described Carl's Jr. as good. I don't know. My <laughs> sister said that. She's like recently converted. And like, I love that. One of us. One of us. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, so I'll, like, as a vegetarian, I usually just get, like, what is available. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I like, I don't know, I spend a lot of time eating at the wide range of fast food establishments we have in our Namely country. Subway. Uh, namely Subway. Actually, I kind of go to all. Subway, Macca's, Burger King, KFC. I'll give you my order for all of them. Um, at Subway, I'll usually go meatball or three pepper chicken. Um, mozzarella is the best cheese. Italian herbs is the best bread. Um, and I'll usually do like lettuce, baby spinach, sun-dried tomatoes, carrot, and pickles. And then I'll usually do like barbecue sauce. Um, so that's Subway. Uh, burger cake. Oh my God, there's mozzarella. <laughs> okay, continue. I usually go for a double cheeseburger combo. I get the nuggets, not the sundae. I hate Burger King ice cream. I love Macca's ice cream. Um, Sweet and sour sauce. What are you doing? Giving them your order if somebody decides that one day they want to send you something. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) They asked. They asked. They asked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Macca's, I'll usually go for a small double cheeseburger combo with a large fry. I don't want the large fries. I want the small fries, but I want the big drink. Um, Sprite Zero, though. Um, Macca's only says Sprite Zero. That's great. Uh, KFC, I usually go for the uh, popcorn chicken snack box or the four nugget snack box. 
Um, or the snack lunch, that's quite good as well. I like the KFC snack burger. Um, I don't eat a lot of food, but I do enjoy fast food. Interesting. Um, burger fuel, I don't know. I feel like that's pushing. The burger fuel slabs. Fast food is. Burger fuel's cool. Burger fuel slabs. American burger Wisconsin, Wisconsin, even more. I hate Burger Wisconsin. Okay, well, you can get out of my life. Burger fuel's great. Burger Wisconsin's great. What is your beef with Burger Wisconsin? The no bun's pun so big. And the, like, okay, the, you probably don't encounter this. The bun's so big, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And the meat is so small relative to the bun size. Yeah. And it's just kind of, I just find the whole thing kind of mediocre. All right, fair. Burger feels um, great, though. Last question, like I saw a couple of questions kind of in this thing, so I'm going to like pile them together in one last final one is how do you be an adult slash exist once you leave high school and like how do you deal with the nervousness of kind of realizing that you are no longer now in high school? Um, it's one of those things you're never going to feel prepared for it until it happens. Um, you're never going to feel prepared for it even after it's happened. Uh, we're great examples of that. People, people, <laughs> people say to us all the time, like, how do you guys add up? Or like, how do you guys have it together? And it's like, bold of you to assume we do. Um, I don't know. I think, I think you just kind of, you do stuff. You just exist. Like, you just do what you've got to do. Like, honestly, going out of high school and going into whatever else you decide to do, the biggest thing is like if you live on like outside of your family and a halls of residence, because a halls of residence is basically just like passing something over. You don't have to pay for Wi-Fi. You don't have to really pay rent. You pay installments. You know, um, people people uh, will be around you to tell you when to eat, what to eat, what to do. Um, you're basically a toddler again, except you're expected to like learn things. Um, so in that way, I wouldn't say that it's very like akin to like flatting or anything like that. I would say probably one of the biggest things in, in like growing up is just pay your bloody bills on time. Like that's, that's about my biggest piece of advice. And then you'll be fine, my dude. Pay your bills first when you get paid. Don't spend money before you pay your bills. Please pay your rent. Please pay your bills. And, like, yeah. Um, oh, I have to pay If you're self-employed, if you work for Uber Eats, please pay your tax. Please pay your tax. Um, that's about it. Yeah. yeah it's important. Tax is good. Tax makes the world spin around. Oh, what do you think about this new GST thing? Do you know about this? This is probably outside your realm of knowledge. Probably, but continue. Uh, so all businesses that's, that take more than, like, 30 grand sell more than 30 grand, which is, like, all businesses internationally into New Zealand. So like your Amazon, your ASOS and stuff all have to start charging GST now. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, mm, okay, uh, I'll flip that one on its head. Um, I would like the policy better if bigger companies actually had to pay tax in the country that they were operating in. Yeah. Well, I guess That would be nicer, wouldn't it? We lost about one billion, over a billion dollars worth of taxes last um, year from brands like Harvey Norman, No Lemmings, and like when they're international, um, there's like a loophole so they don't have to pay tax. Um, certain, a certain kind of tax. I imagine they have to pay some kind of tax. Oh, so you end up paying some tax. Oh, so, so, so with GST, not, with GST the, you end up paying, but GST is usually passed on to the customer. But um, there's like an international loophole something rather. I can explain means, to you how this works. It's not that complicated. Go. We'll, we'll like, oh, okay. Okay, so... The, so when that's it's changed, I'll be happier. It's, it's tax awesome. evasion. It's tax evasion. It's super legal. No, it's perfectly legal. It is perfectly legal, it's but perfectly it shouldn't legal. be. It's, it's, it's like pooing on an airplane, it's frowned Essentially, upon. you make it so your business makes no profit in New Zealand. Um, so, um, so most countries will have their company registered in a company like Ireland just because they have really generous corporate tax, as in corporate tax rates very low. Um, so essentially, then all their profits will end up through a clever accounting, all their profits will end up in that island business and their New Zealand business will make very little money. So they'll only pay tax on that very little money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's, there's kind of ways around this. It's I not like, that I like how very clever accounting could be traded for shady business deals. And that sentence would it's still be the It's very standard. It's very standard in a big Being business. Being standard does not make it morally or ethically okay. Because it is normal, it does not make it okay. You have to legislate away from it. You can't just expect companies to change the way they operate. No, 100%. Because these companies no, 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 are no, no, no. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is it's all fun and games to put GST on people trying to get things into the country. But you've got big corporations like this, like, doing whatever the hell they want. And they're like, nah, we'll leave them go. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Well, if, you, if you're interested, you can look into it. This um, has been a low-key, like, very fiery episode. There's some ways around it. It's kind of... It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of complex, especially with things like Facebook, where they're not directly doing sales in New Zealand, but, oh, actually, they are doing some sales, but a lot of the money, revenue they're generating is not directly linked to sales. It becomes quite complex, but, yeah. Mm. There's, there's, like, proposals of, like, taxing 
texting based on like usage and stuff or yeah. like oh the, the the main proposal against the way away this is so say facebook globally makes a billion dollars and say 10 percent of the users are in new zealand which is way more but way mm. less but yeah just yeah, makes yeah, yeah, yeah they'll pay like a hundred if they made a billion dollar profit they'd pay tax on a hundred million off that because um that's kind of one way around it it's quite complex but um i don't know it is something you we may see change in the next 10 years but we it may also not depends how far i don't know in new zealand you may see some change in the u.s i think it's really unlikely you ever see change on that yeah i mean as long as like yeah, I'm not going to get too politically charged. Yeah. All I'm Look saying is... Look into Ireland's is, tax economy. It's great. All I'm saying is we can GS... It's actually really bad for Ireland as well, but that's a discussion for another day. Yeah. Especially all they I, look way richer than they I are. I think too long don't read about this episode is <laughs> if we want to make any kind of like significant change, we must take down the bourgeoisie. Isn't it bourgeoisie? Is bourgeoisie. I don't, I don't bring that. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm a pro, so I don't understand these things. Oh, sorry. What's the what's the what's the worker class? Pro. Proletariat. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I haven't looked at it. It is a really shorthand well. like a pro. Okay. Right. Which is why people call other people like, oh, you're such a pro. Okay, right. Yeah. Right. something today. Like, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks Last for watching. Last of half hour of the year. <laughs> Last one of the year. Um, yeah, have a good summer. Like, yeah. Good luck with results. Um, yeah. Sorry I reminded you off there. I just realised I probably should have done that. But like, yeah, have a have a safe summer. Just enjoy have, yourself. Have yeah, fun. Yeah, have fun. If you're going to uni, best of luck. Take this summer to, you know, do some mahi, um, you know, save some money because you're going to spend it on stupid stuff in first week. Um, I promise you, you're going to tell me right now that you won't, but you will give yourself a buffer. Um yeah, uh, and if you're going into, you know, like next year of NCA, if you're even just starting NCA next year, um, best of luck. Take a, you know, take the summer for yourself. Do some things that you enjoy. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's that's my part. You've got to sign off now. Um, yeah, enjoy yourself. <laughs> have fun. Um, yeah. I don't know much. Just like legitimately enjoy yourself and please just don't don't sit at home every day watching Netflix. Please get it's summer, it's so beautiful outside. Mm. Get out, go for a walk. Take your dog for a walk. Take your dog for a walk, take your bike for a walk. Um, and oh fun. okay, yeah. Sorry, sorry, I just had a really dark joke go through my head. I'll make it after. Okay. Goodbye. Bye guys. <laughs>